Somebody requested that I do a video based on vision and where we're looking in terms of planning. Now that's a really difficult one to do. Now, I was trying to work out if I could set a camera up to look at my eyes to show you where I'm looking because my eyes are never stationary when I'm riding my bike. They're not just staring up the road. They're looking all over the place. Not in a manic, haphazard manner. It's quite um, organized. But my eyes are never stationary. So here I'm checking out all of the pedestrians. I'm also looking all the way up the road for your oncoming traffic. I'm also checking my mirrors. There's never a moment where my eyes are not doing something. They are always busy taking in as much as I can from as far away up the road, side to side, as you're coming back into yourself, and then back to the mirrors. And this gets repeated over and over again. So my eyes have lifted all the way up to the white van at the top. They've come back to check out the road surface right in front of me. They've gone back up again. We've seen the blue car. We're checking out the pedestrians, thinking about our position, looking at the road surface, back up to see the oncoming traffic and back to my mirrors. <laughs> I almost can't talk quickly enough. In fact, I can't talk quickly enough for where my eyes are going to. Eyes back up to the very furthest point in the road, scanning left and right, left and right, left and right. Nothing's going on, so back to the mirrors. Now, if there was a hazard that I needed to focus on, like the blue car at the edge of the road with all the pedestrians back there, then I'll focus on it for a little bit longer until I'm happy that my position is good and that there's nothing untoward about to happen. So here, for example, I've taken my eyes up to the top of the road. I've noticed the flashing van. I'm thinking about pedestrians around that van. There's also all these little side roads here. There's a consideration of were there any pedestrians at the, at the um, pedestrian crossing back there, pressing buttons, things like that all sorts of things as well as still trying to assess the road surface and keeping an eye on the mirrors so again my eyes have gone all the way up to the traffic lights at the top of the hill they're scanning back back to the mirrors now watching the junction on the left thinking about my position for the junction nothing coming up to the junction so i'm going to hold two eyes back up to the top of the road i've done a mirror check in the middle of all of that still checking out the road surface and then in the meantime i realized i was doing 34 when i should have been doing 32. <laughs> probably because i'm also trying to talk at the same time as doing all of this and multitasking is hard so if we were to draw a picture of where my eyes go it's top zigzag 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 mirrors Top. By top, I mean the furthest point in the road that we can see. And then zigzag, 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 and mirrors. Now, the car that just turned across, I was focused on him for long enough to make sure he was definitely turning and not coming up the road towards me on the wrong side of the road. And once I was happy that he was, then I let my eyes go back to assessing the rest of the um, situation at hand. Eyes have gone all the way up to the roundabout. They've even gone up the hill just to see what's going on up there because that's where I'm going to be going next. Eyes to the roundabout now, so focusing. I also try to look up the both sides of the large vehicles that are coming towards me. So if there's something like a bus or a lorry coming towards me, I'll try to see up the side of it to see what's coming up behind them. Quite often vehicles will be looking for an overtake. So I want to look and see if those cars or vehicles are positioned or even beginning to accelerate more for an overtake. Lots of people when they're stationary just sit stationary and don't check their mirrors. I'd like to check my mirrors, see what's going on behind me. As well as just generally taking in what's going on all around. Having a little check of the junction, looking up the road that I'm turning onto before I turn onto it. Mirrors. And whilst I'm stationary here, I'm checking out the road surface ahead. Mirrors. Because I want to know who's coming up behind me and whether or not they're going to be chasing me down the road or I'm going to be relatively safe without them chasing me.
Lots of people focus too close into themselves when they're riding along, particularly inexperienced riders. And they'll be looking at the vehicle directly in front of them or just a couple of vehicles in front. And actually, you need to be looking all the way up the road as far as you can to assess your hazards early. I remember when vehicles are approaching side roads, particularly those on the left, which are the biggest danger to you. You want to be watching their wheels. If you can be watching their wheels, that's the bit that's going to move first. And I'd also recommend covering the horn if you think it's likely that they're going to move over on you or move out on you. Mirrors. Still looking beyond the cars that are turning so that I'm planning ahead for the next hazards rather than just focusing on the immediate hazard. So I've looked all the way up the road beyond the traffic lights. I've spotted the flashy um, school lights. Bearing in mind that if it's busy, we're going to drop our speed. But if it isn't busy, we're going to keep the speed. Lots of mirrors. Whilst I'm approaching these lights, I'm looking beyond to assess any of the hazards coming up. So the side roads on the left and right. There's a big bus coming towards us. So there might be vehicles trying to look to get past the bus. We're watching the wheels of the car on the left. Lots going on down here. A few vehicles coming round the bus. So thinking about positioning as we approach the bus. Bus is now moving off so I can stop thinking about that hazard for now. Take my eyes way further up the road. Trying to position myself so I can see past these cars. And at the moment it's okay to be out wide because we've got these nice hatch markings between us and the oncoming traffic. Eyes back up to the end of the road, see brake lights in the far distance, traffic lights closer have changed so it's mirrors. Just watching for any body that might be trying to cut across, not at the traffic lights, but across the road because the lights have changed earlier. It's always helpful to drop back from the vehicles in front, even if they're not getting up to the speed limit, especially quickly because you can then gain a view around them. It's much harder to be able to plan ahead and see further up the road if you're too close to the vehicles in front. You also can't see your road surface, so you're more likely to hit potholes or debris that's in the road. Lovely, so he's still heavily braking on the speed hump, which actually made me think he was gonna potentially turn then. There we go, there it is. <laughs> So we're watching the black car with his indicator on. He's turned his indicator off now, that was interesting. I didn't see whether he moved off from the side of the road. Eyes up towards the red car coming over the top of the hill. Planning my position because there's this awkward crack in the tarmac which I don't really want to get tracking in. Just generally keeping an eye on those cars as they came out of the junction just to make sure they were going where I thought they were going. Mr Van's breaking down the hill. So he's either looking to stop, looking to turn, or is just controlling his speed as he comes down the hill. Eyes to the very end of the road, right at the bottom of the hill. Looking at the side roads, cars coming out, cars turning, parked cars on both sides of the road, so I need to plan my position carefully. And my eyes are going back to my mirrors every now and then, but I'm still lifting them back up. Cyclist on the right, so mind the cars coming past. And my eyes are never stationary. I'd like to get out of this um, bad surface though. Mind you, it's not much better on this bit. This is just a particularly poor road. That was my eyes on the wheels of the white car then. For the duration that that car was moving towards the junction. Mirrors. I'm gonna try this bit of the road instead. No, that's no better either. It's very bumpy. Eyes up to the end, there's lots going on up here, so you've got the stopped bus, so eyes are going left and right, car at the junction on the right, car at the junction on the left. <laughs> it's all very busy, so my eyes are going to all of these hazards, assessing them and then prioritising which ones are the biggest hazards. Horn, hand on the horn, just in case. That was a small gap with cars on either side, so my speed also came down. You've got cars that are potentially going to turn from both sides. Consider reducing your speed and do cover your horn. And again, front brake was covered then, just in case that car decided to move off without indicating or without checking properly. Puscat, don't want to run him over. <laughs> 
it would be amazing if I could manufacture a way to um, set up a camera so you could see where my eyes go. But they are constantly moving. Even as I'm stationary here, I'm still checking out people like the child with the scooter at the traffic lights, making sure that the adults got hold of them. Simple things like that that could make all the difference if the adult hasn't got hold of them. Just says sirens. A busy old day today. I check my mirrors very regularly when I ride, especially when I'm in busier areas. But it's also to do with timing those mirrors. Some less experienced people will be checking their mirrors at the wrong time when they should be focusing on what's going on in front of them. So it's really important that you time your mirror check. So if there's a queue building in front of you or there's the possibility of the traffic slowing down in front of you, that you are focused on that and not checking those mirrors. So eyes up to the flashing zebra crossing, left and right, left and right, looking at the pedestrians, assessing the yellow box junction and all these cars that are braking on the approach. Mirrors, Mercedes is getting quite close behind. Mirrors again. I'm not going to go onto the yellow box. Lots of these cars will stop on the box because of the zebra crossing. Very common here for that to happen. to search with your eyes behind the parked cars when there's zebra crossings around looking before you get there. So there's a lady in a red coat crossing now. And I only know that because I looked up the left-hand side of the parked cars. And again, I'm looking up the left-hand side of the white van just to see if the road ahead is actually clear. I'm not just assuming that it's clear because we've got a green light. Furthest part of the road, I've checked out the man with the dogs just to make sure they're actually on leads, they're not going to jump out towards me. Or well, he's got good control of them on their leads. Eyes up to the end of the road where there's a bend coming up. Mirrors watching what the learner's up to. Mirrors again, a little bit of brakes. Eyes to the pedestrian with another dog. Mirrors. Mercedes isn't very good at forward planning, they keep getting up my backside. Looking round the bend, I can pass the learner on their left. I'm going to do it very slowly just in case they go the wrong way. <laughs> Eyes up to the traffic lights. They're watching the junctions on the left and the right and this little side entrance here, mirrors. And again, I'm still checking my mirrors whilst I'm stationary. I'm not assuming that the cars behind are actually slowing down to stop. I'd rather know whether they're actually slowing down enough. My eyes are looking up. Left, right, left, right, left, right, down, and up, and mirrors. The down is for the road surface. And a lot of people seem to miss judging the road surface and end up riding through a lot of the potholes and bad surface that is actually avoidable. If you could incorporate the looking down occasionally as well. Looking for any dark patches on the road surface. Dark patches here, look, for example, on the left, you can tell that that's going to be a bad surface, and then on the right as well. So choosing where to put your tyres according to the road surface is very helpful. 